Hi, my name is Emma Simone and I'm the student minister at Upper Mills, Macadam and Boca Beck United Churches. I'm here today to lead you in prayer, some scripture and a short message. So let us pray. We are sinners, but we are not only sinners. We are weak, but we are not only weak. We do fail, but we are not always failures. We have destroyed, but also we have loved. You, God, do not limit us to the stories by which the world knows us. You see much more in us than the labels we give ourselves. Give us courage to defy all expectations, especially our own, and in your love, become all of who we are. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. And so she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit anything along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son, but God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah, whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. And when the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. And then she went and sat down opposite him in a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. So I remember clearly the first time I heard about Hagar and Ishmael. I was in middle school, and I had never heard that Abraham had any other child but Isaac. I knew Abraham was to have as many descendants as the stars, that his family had traveled a far way to settle Canaan, that he was willing to sacrifice Isaac for God, that he had greeted angels. I knew all of this. But no one had ever told me that Abraham had a child with his wife's maid. And then the wife got jealous and he sent them off into the desert with a loaf of bread and some water. I was in my 20s until I heard the story of how Abraham had tried to pass off his wife for his sister when he was in Egypt. But that's a story for another day. I remember when I first heard this story because I was really surprised and maybe even a little hurt that Abraham would do such a thing. All the stories that I had heard was that he was this amazing father of the faith. Over time, though, I've started to read these more complex stories, and I've come to have a much greater appreciation for Abraham. He wasn't perfect. He didn't live a charmed life. He struggled with answering God's call, and he made mistakes. All of a sudden, instead of being a great father of the faith, he becomes a lot more like me, flawed and faithful trying his best and not knowing quite what to do. On Father's Day, my own relationship of, with Abraham's story brings to mind that so many of us see our fathers as heroic during our childhoods. And as we grow, we start to see their imperfections, the humanity in our fathers. And then our teen years, we may only see the bad and rebel against them. But now that I'm in my 30s, my dad is back to being my hero. I just know and understand him a lot better. I see him and I love all of him. 
But along with this being Father's Day, this is Pride Month, Indigenous Peoples Day, and we're in the midst of the Black Lives Matter movement having a resurgence after the death of George Floyd. And I would love to devote time to each of these, but we would be here all day. So instead, I will highlight a common theme, the danger of the single story. As I have already highlighted with Abraham, there are many stories to tell, and which ones that we choose to tell will tell others how to view Abraham as a biblical character. And the same can be said about members of the LGBTQ plus community and racialized communities. When we tell stories that are only negative about these groups, we feed racism, transphobia, and homophobia. And that is an issue. But more so, often in our history, we haven't told their stories at all. We don't teach them, we don't build monuments to them, we don't name streets after their heroes. And actually, we have often taught the history of their oppressors, built monuments and named streets after the people who have wrote the laws, created the policies, that ensured that we didn't hear their stories. We have celebrated the people who colonized without telling stories of colonization. And so, like Abraham was to me as a child, we have created historical heroes without ever showcasing that they had flaws, that they hurt people, and that their successes came via the oppression of others. And recently, I have seen lots of lists of books and television and movies that we should be watching or reading to educa educate our children and ourselves about race, sexuality, and gender. And these are all great, but they also highlight how much we rely on the media to tell us the stories. In New Brunswick, we often hear a single story by design. Many of you are watching me now thanks to Charlotte County Television, and it's one of only a handful of community-owned television stations left in this country. Being community-based allows them to tell the stories that matter to us here, like the year-round Campobello Ferry, that on a provincial or national scale probably isn't top of mind. This station allows me to share this story with you, and even though it may not be profitable to broadcast for Christian services on Sunday morning, it does showcase the diversity of our faith expressions in this region, and it tells others nationally and regionally our stories. But most media in this country, though, is owned by Bell, Rogers, or Shaw. So they decide what stories we hear and see. We may only get those three stories that have been curated for what is important by those three media conglomerates. And further complicating that, in New Brunswick, these are the same three companies that provide satellite, cable, cell, and internet services to the majority of us. This means that they also control how we receive the story and for rural New Brunswickers, if they can receive the story at all. Rogers and Shaw have chosen not to broadcast Charlotte County television widely, as an example. But they also don't have any reporters based in our area. The few in New Brunswick are required to cover the whole province while being based in the cities. And the newscasts are often attempting to cover all of the Maritimes. So some of our stories are neglected. We heard just this week that more than 1,300 students did not have access to school materials over this pandemic, and numerous reasons were cited, but they included a lack of high-speed internet access or cell service in order to get a hold of data. Bell and Rogers have expanded service only in those areas where it is profitable, which has often left rural locales behind. And a lack of internet available in the home because the price of internet, which is dictated by these companies, cannot be afforded by those in poverty. And so it's too expensive for them to have internet in their home, and they rely on library and public internet access, which during the pandemic were closed. Print media in this province is not faring any better. The vast majority of our print media in New Brunswick is owned by Brunswick News, which is an Irving-owned company. And this can make it difficult to have any conversation about glyphosate spraying, industrial taxation, pipelines, etc. When the news is owned by the province's major industrial player. Canada is the industrial nation with the largest media concentration. And this means that we have the least amount of diversity in what stories are told. And New Brunswick is the province within Canada with the largest media concentration. 
That means that even within a lack of diverse voices nationally, we have the least amount of diversity. So if you are hearing a story in New Brunswick, chances are good that it has been told to you by one of only four companies. The Canadian Senate has cited this as problematic, and recently a bill has been tabled in the provincial legislature to limit companies to 40% media ownership in hopes of paving the way for more diverse media in our province's future. But in the meantime, we have to seek out the other stories. This channel is a good place to start for local commentary. The MB Media Co-op offers a similar grassroots print reporting from diverse voices of New Brunswick stories online or monthly in their paper, The Brief. And APTN, the Aboriginal People's Television Network, offers stories from Indigenous peoples across Canada. If you start to get even a portion of your news from these and other diverse sources, you start to realize that for too long, you were hearing only one story. And it's not that the stories that we are hearing are wrong. It's that they are being chosen and told by so few. It isn't that Abraham wasn't faithful and isn't the father of the world's three major faiths, but he was also a man who rejected his firstborn son and sent him into the desert. Hearing Hagar's story gave me a more complete picture of who Abraham was. Hearing queer stories, black stories, indigenous stories, rural stories, stories that come out of poverty, doesn't change the history of Canada or of New Brunswick, but it does give us a more complete picture of who we are. And we need to know who we are so we can faithfully chart a path forward together. Hopefully learning from our past mistakes and never again falling into the dangers of having a single story. And so, happy Father's Day, Happy Pride, Happy Indigenous Peoples Day, and Black Lives Matter. All of these are important and all of these deserve celebration and joy. All of them speak to stories that need to be told, read, and seen on June 21st and every other day and week of the year. Let us pray. Risen, living Christ, we embrace your gift of resurrection power. We open our whole being to your invitation to join you in moving from deadness into fullness of life. We respond yes to your call to live. Jesus, spirit, companion, friend, you embrace the whole world with human divine love and caring. You ask each of us to show our love for you by tending and feeding your world and its people. Enable us to recognize the people and places to whom we are being sent. Enable us to offer love. Open to us fresh expressions of your loving of us so that we can be more whole and more accepting of ourselves and out of that acceptance, move towards others with trusting hearts. Turn us from mourning into dancing, loosen our sackcloth, gird us with gladness. Christ Spirit, you go before us and call us into the future. Encourage our community as we form and reform ourselves as your body. And just as the Easter story energized the first disciples, so we would be energized to dream new visions and be open to new risks and to the unknown. We join your embrace of the whole world with our prayers. Amen.